Three of the top ASX defense companies are up 140% for the year and 40% in just the last month alone. We know that momentum stocks are market leaders because the best returns come from the strongest momentum themes. Right now, that's defense. They make up the strongest momentum thematic on the ASX right now. Now, finding these strongest themes isn't easy. Often it can spread across multiple sectors and industries. What we can see when we have a look at the market map, we know it's broken down into 11 different sectors, healthcare, industrials, financials, consumer discretionary materials, and so on. The problem can be, and even in today, today's top six, we've got these top six leaders spread across two different sectors, materials and industrials. We've seen it before, buy now, pay later was the best example, spread across financials, industrials, communication, or information technology. When you're looking at competitors, can't just say within the sector, within the subsector, to find their best peers. And that's where momentum themes come from. It's the economic component. So we're constantly scanning the market and collating lists of these market leaders. When we find the leaders, the peers with their same economic drivers, then it becomes the timing and the market entry that we really drill down and focus on. So often winning patterns, if we look at them from a charting perspective, we use Drone Shield because it's a good solid chart. When we're looking at them, we find solid gains. This kind of run-up that we see, well, pretty much for 2024 so far. Coming out of December, moving into January, and then February, a good strong run. High volume, end of January, February. Good flick up. Bit of a pullback into March with huge volume. But then this consolidation happens. Which particularly, we see in April, this volume dries up. And so does the volatility. You get this consolidation. Then what we call a coil. That's what we're looking for. We want to see the market leaders. This is where the interest is. We want to make sure they've got peers, which we see in the sectors and the economic drivers. And then we see a bit of a pullback. And it's how they behave in the pullback that give us an indication of the strength of the rally that can come. But the overarching thing is that they're always strong momentum leaders in that scene. Nonetheless, when we're looking for them, what we want to see in this breakout, where we can see a pop from this sort of consolidation or where it kicks into gear and drone shield started running in May, quite often the catalyst can be something that's external. It could be an international peer with massive news. It could be merger and, acquisi merger and acquisition activity from a local competitor. All of this needs to be monitored as they provide that viable setup of where we can really get set and get a good trade in. So looking at the six defensive companies that we've got on the list today, None of them are in the ASX 300, top 300, the XKO. Two are in the ASX All Lords, or about 500 companies. The rest are smaller cap companies. So it tells you where these big growth names really come from. Because they're not in the top 300, we won't be discussing their entry into the launch pad. Now, the launch pad is a precursor. Companies that become momentum leaders start off in the launch pad. We've got a whole video we'll put on screen and the notes below where we've just been through the top 30 launch pad companies this week. We talked about them. We talk about them every Friday. But today we're looking at the top six momentum companies within the defense segment of the market. Sixth place, CVL, probably the smallest capitalized company on the list today. We can see that coming into May, they had a bit of a rally and some good volume early May, and then a congestion. We see the volume dries off dramatically. Not many people took the opportunity when they got into the mid and high 90s to sell down. So they got through the 90s up towards a dollar didn't take the opportunity to sell down in heavy volume. You can see the volume's super light throughout mid-June, May, mid-June, and then into July, the volume kicks off again to give us the performance that we see at the moment. But if we move into fifth place, this is a familiar name. Anyone who was watching these videos about three, four years ago when we covered the top defense companies when they ran last time, Electro Optic Systems was in the list. Zooming out, you can see that would have been 2019 with a strong surge of what was happening with the defense companies. They relieved the theme resurges and we've got them into the top six today. So Electro, Electro Optic Systems, EOS, 25% move for the month and 78% over the year. See good surge in February with solid volume and massive, so big volume with massive range days, peaking towards mid-March, drifting back into June, falling back onto the red line, which is a 200 day moving average. And that volume really dries up along the way. Bit of a false break and a spring happening in here. From a Wyckoff perspective, we see the day here on the 17th of June undercuts the previous low that was only about a week earlier on the 11th of June. Does it on big volume. 
that's a big reversal volume. The next day it fails to break down, fails to go lower, but higher volume once again and closes higher. That's Wyckoff Spring and you can see it's reloaded and got running. <laughs> Moving from EOS, BIS into fourth place. Just a steady, steady riser. Gary's always talking about conforming with the moving averages. This blue line here is your 10-day moving average. You can see once it gets there over March, it really conforms to that 10-day. Only spent about three days below it towards late May. It quickly reloaded and got back in there. Dipped back to the 20-day in June. And then, well, it's been one-way traffic since it got touched that 20-day. Just temporarily intraday. And then turned around and got going with strong volume all the way through from that movement. BIS, Biz Alloy, 9% move for the week, 10% for the month, 44 for the quarter, and 96 over the year. Steady, steady rise up. We move into the top three. We go back to the Drone Shield for understanding that chart. We've looked at it. We get a bit of an idea of what that company does. So bring that onto screen, you can see their website, and they're going to give you some good visuals of what's going on. We know this company is a focus in drone protection. So... It's drone detection, identification, and mitigation solutions that they say. So they offer counter drone systems. You can see that sitting on top of the boat here and the all-terrain vehicle that will be on screen as well. Offering these counter drone systems, they address the growing concern and challenges posed by unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, or drones. What we do see is that they cater to government agencies, critical infrastructure operators, prisons, corporations and event organizers that are seeking protection from unauthorized drone activity. So they manufacture, they design and manufacture their own hardware and their software. That's solution so they can detect, they can track and identify and neutralize drone sets, drone threats. They work in the areas of radio frequency signal detection systems, drone identification software and drone disabling technologies. That seems to be the critical one and what's got a lot of international coverage. When we, go, when we look at Drone Shield and their performances, we can see a 12% rise over the week, 40% for the month, 92 over the quarter, 213% rise over the year. Going back to the chart to really get an idea of that movement, we're seeing them come in December, about 34 cents today or the end of last week, closing just under $2 with a solid kick from a recent low, 26th of June, sitting about $1.50, getting up towards $2 in just over a week into the start of the new financial year. Second place, TTT. Titomic Limited, you can see that huge surge on Friday, massive candle, huge movement on the 5th of July. They've got a 57% rise for the week. You can see that coming from under 10 cents to surging above it. Gary looked at this for the last two weeks. You can have a look, TTT, 57% move for the week, 36 for the, for the month, but you can see they're coming down into the end of June. 75% over the quarter and 203% for the year. Much less liquidity happening over here. But you do see it all dried up throughout the end of June. There was not much selling into the end of financial year. It didn't take the opportunity. It came down with a similar thing earlier in June 13th. Tried to undercut the low. Didn't really happen, but sat on the previous highs of March and April. TTT, when we have a look, we'll bring their website up so you can get more visuals once again. The top two are in a similar sort of space in the sense that it's manufacturing size. So they say they're pioneering large format metal additive manufacturing. They work from glass bottles to battleships. So additive manufacturing, also known as 3D printing, that's working with industrial scale metal components. So they're completing near net shape metal structures. If you're gonna build a large battleship, you probably need that. What they're focusing on is a 3D printing technique called cold metal deposition. And that's to create large metal structures layer by layer. They use solid state metal feedstock and they're enabling them to print the wider range of metals compared to the general standard 3D printing methods that we'd have if we have a 3D printer at home or a smaller scale. So they focus on large scale metal printing that can cater for industrial, mining and other applications. Works through to transportation and other molds and tooling for manufacturing as well. They're currently collaborating with established companies in different sectors so they can really develop these processes in that metal 3D printing solutions for specific applications. And obviously with Defence, a lot of those contracts can be a bit hush-hush as to what they're doing exactly. So TTT, massive movements and a huge movement just in the last week alone. Brings us into first place, AL3. Now we'll put AL3 on screen here so you can see that chart. 
Huge kicker just in the last couple of weeks. Explosive, what Gary calls change of character volumes happening right down here. Seven, six and a half, seven cents. And we see it coming to just before the end of June, 27th of June. Kicks on up, huge volume, getting towards 24 cents. From a performance perspective, we see an 81% rise for the week, 110% over the month, 138 over the quarter, and 143 for the year. Most of that being this tailwind here towards the end of the financial year. To understand what the company does to get to first place as a top momentum company on the top thematic on the ASX right now. So AL3, manufacturing large-scale metal 3D printers. Their technology is based on wire additive manufacturing, WAM. You use electric arc, which you can see on screen, electric arc and certified welding wire feedstock to create their metal parts. Their printers are said to be faster, stronger and more efficient than traditional methods. They also are said to be envir more environmentally friendly. They sell their printers to a variety of industries, including aerospace, defense, maritime, and oil and gas industries. They're the leading defense companies on this ASX. To keep across the leading groups, we look at the launch pads every single week. Put a link on screen over there to the right, where you can look at the top 30 launch pad companies and the top 30 momentum stocks every single week.